But of course, the I edge, didn't yeah. know Rosalind as a child because there was nine years between us. Yeah. So by the time I was kind of aware of her, she was 15 or so. Mm. Mm. What was she like as a 15-year-old to the young you? <laughs> she was a good big sister, but she was um, she was working very hard and sort of busy on homework and what was then called matric. So and that's when I first became aware of her. I I know that you've talked before about her her support from the rest of your family. What were your parents like supporting you, your brothers, and Rosalind in following? through into an academic career? Well, they assumed we'd all go to university. Beyond that, Rosalind was the only one with an academic career as such, really. Mm -hmm. There is a sort of myth that she, they objected to her going to Cambridge, which was is not true. Mm. Um, they did feel in when the war started that um, she should leave Cambridge and do some war work. My father's sisters had done War, um, been in the land of I mean, in the First World War, but she, she anyway, she, she um, came back to Cambridge my, with my mother's support very much and eventually with my father's. Mm. I understand as well that she wasn't particularly fond of exams to start with. I mean, that's something you've remarked on before. Well, she was she... nervous of exams, she was fond of exams, but she, she wasn't confident in exams, mm. well, wasn't confident of her results, but there was no need not to be confident. Because she was particularly apt and able to... She did very well, yeah. yes. Do you know why she chose to sort of follow chemistry particularly? Was that just something she was particularly just good at? interested in. Yeah. Hmm. So I no, she was good all round, I think, but that was her interest. Mm -hmm. and my brother has a memory of her, which I've put in the book, so you can see, developing photographs as a child and having pleasure at what it did. And I think that's maybe a sign of an interest... Hmm. Just thinking a little bit about her character, and I mean, she was a very busy person. She was involved in an awful lot of things. I know about mountaineering, but what yes. what other things was she involved in doing? Um, yes, well, she loved mountaineering. She loved travel. Um, she had good friends. She had a lot of energy. She didn't waste time. She was very determined, perhaps. But I think she was quite good on mountains. I certainly couldn't go with her. And then, I mean, studying somewhere that's so incredibly flat, um, she must have uh, enjoyed escaping to... Well, I don't think that worries her, but she, <laughs> she was, um, she cycled quite a lot to went around here. She cycled home to London from Cambridge, but um, I imagine that wasn't so unusual then. Mm. There was good. less traffic. Good distance, though. It was a good distance. That hadn't changed, but the traffic's changed. Mm. Now, she was at Newnham College as a, an yes. undergraduate. There were only the two colleges you could go to, Newnham and Girton. Did the challenges that she had to overcome affect her personality? What was her character like in...? There were plenty of scientists at Newnham. It mm. wasn't an odd thing to do. I mean, people often say, what would she have achieved if she had not been a woman? But I think the answer is, what would she have achieved if she had not died at 37? Yeah. The work as such continued... Um, she was at that time at Birkbeck working with Aaron Klug, who continued the same work and eventually brought it to Cambridge, of course, to the laboratory of molecular biology here. What do you think she would think about being... I mean, she's celebrated as a woman scientist, as a pioneer of her time. She didn't see herself that way in any way. How did she see herself? As a scientist. I suppose it's arguable that that's feminist in its way, but it, she wouldn't have seen herself as a feminist or striking a blow for the rights of women or whatever mm. at all. There were difficulties every now and then, well, certainly in her first year of research. I suppose the crux of um, many people's view of Rosalind is obviously her work, pioneering work on uh, extra crystallography and the picture, the but picture. Her time at King's. And so her time yes. at King's. I mean, but the time at King's was, of course, in just over two years. Yeah. January 51 to March 53, if I remember right. Being so close to her at that time, what, I mean, what she'd was, come what was home the atmosphere? quite often at weekends, and she was obviously unhappy at King's, mm. as is generally known. Mm. So Did that spur her on even more so into her work because of her sort of unhappiness there, or was it no, something of a hindrance? I think she had always been very conscientious, is rather a mild word. Um, she'd always been immensely hard at any problem she had. Yeah. She'd said that it wasn't 
no problem was worth it, and this was really interested in it, and she was really interested in, in whatever problems she was she, she'd taken up. Yeah. And then she would work very hard at it. You know, some people see that Watson and Crick perhaps were were given more of the limelight for the discovery uh, of. Well, that of course was. I mean, the Nobel Prizes and all that were four years after she died, yeah. when it was very easy to ignore someone who wasn't around. Yeah. Do you think she was? justly treated or perhaps should there have been more? I think what I think was unjust was the famous photograph was shown without her knowledge and it's the fact that I think she never knew how much they'd owed to her so she wouldn't have felt it unjust because she didn't know. How can you sum up the importance of what that, that work has? It's obviously made perhaps the biggest revolution in biological science of the 20th century. Yeah. How do you feel about that, sort of, that was your sister? Well, that is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she was, of course, only a part of it. I mean, a big part, but a part of it. A lot of people involved mm-hmm. after her death. And then there was the Double Helix, um, written by Watson, which was a pretty unkind portrait of her, and which made such a lot of people come to her defence that now her reputation soared, really.